Hey guys, today I wanted to look at a article that was written almost seven and a half years ago by Todd Anderson on Star City Games. It is a really good article. Obviously, you can just type in the name on Google and it will pop up. It's a article written when Magic, well, we didn't have the pro Magic, which are being paid a salary by Wizards of the Coast. We would had a system where you had to grind out and it was very difficult to make a living from Magic the Gathering. And Todd Anderson, to his credit, he wrote a very personal article about how he felt disrespected at work and then he quit his job to be a full-time Magic player and what effects that had on his wife. It's still a fascinating read. Uh, at the time it came out, it was very controversial. I think at this time, it's just kind of a fact of life that a lot of people want to uh, be Magic the Gathering players. And to become a Magic the Gathering player, you do have to sacrifice a lot. So he had just won $20,000 and he went to work. And he had him in work for a few days because he's traveling to go to tournament. He looked at the schedule and he was put down for the next weekend, which is an, uh, another Grand Prix Pittsburgh. So he went off to look at his manager and the manager said, you are taking too many weekends off. I can't give you off next weekend or Labor Day weekend after. That the restaurant is really busy during Labor Day and you've already taken too much time off. My tongue turned to silly putty in my mouth. My shoes filled with lead and I couldn't move. I couldn't breathe. I have to be off on Labor Day. I can't miss the tournament. Isn't there anything you can do? His reply was a slow shake of his head and a muttered short sorry. I felt like yelling. I felt like telling him to go screw himself. I felt like dying. Instead, it just turned around, clocked out, and went home. I didn't go back. One of the things that I wanted to make very clear is a lot of Magic players, are, especially professional or semi-professional uh, they would not make very good employees at a typical company. So I don't know if it's a chicken or egg issue. Is it the fact that they may not find good work that is satisfying and that's why they turn to magic? Or is it because magic, they turn to magic and then suddenly their perspective of reality changes? So in a real job, if you steal, if you cheat, losing the job, yeah, that's probably the least... Um, being banned or losing the job is very common, but you can also go to jail. So jail time is a real possibility in the real realm, a reality. But in Magic the Gathering, if you were to cheat at playing the card game, just like we saw recently at GP Prague or GP Las Vegas or any of the GPs really, if you were to cheat and get caught, you would only not you not be punished, but you would be allowed to continue to play, just like Dan Ward was allowed to play, even though he was caught cheating at a event at Kenwin Games. And it's important to use names because otherwise it's not real. So he was an employee at a store that hosted an event where he was that was streaming the event. So of course he probably set up the stream. He was caught cheating on camera in the top eight. And then later on, people apologized for him. He was not cheating. It was a mistake. His opponent even came on to my YouTube video where it shows clear evidence that he had cheated and went on a rampage and rant on how he was a nice guy and therefore he didn't cheat. Well, four months later, he was in a team modern with Craig, Craig Wesco, a very famous uh, Magic player. And his whole team got banned, including Craig. Because he, again, got cheated and now he got banned for a year. So, yeah. <laughs> he would, probably was not the greatest employee. If you're willing to cheat for $30 on camera, then what are you willing to do? Are you going to steal magic cards? Are you going to steal singles? There is a great potential for people to steal stuff when they, own, when they operate a magic store. Because they buy stuff in and then they sell stuff. And they stock stuff. And magic stores are not known for the best inventory management. So some inventory can be missing, including singles. 
So if someone's willing to cheat on camera for 50 bucks at an event they hosted and they were streaming themselves, then imagine how much money, how much stuff they're going to steal from you. And this is a real problem. I talked to my friends who own game stores and Magic Pros are most likely to steal from you. If someone's willing to cheat on camera, they will steal from you on camera. It's harder to prove. So this is a fascinating uh, psychology article, and I would be, I would be interested to see an update now that Todd has had some success of the last seven years, because it wasn't easy for him to get to the point he is now. And I wish him the best. I truly, I did when I first read the article, and I still do. But it is irresponsible to quit your day job, to literally quit your day job because you want to play Magic. Magic is a good game, but I don't think it's here to support anyone. I know it supports Tolarian and Weds and larger content creators. But, and Todd has done a really good job becoming a content creator first and then a Magic player, a pro Magic player second. So he pushes out content consistently now. But it's a small percentage. So when people say, oh, look at that person who lost all that weight. Look at that person who uh, was a high school nerd. Now they're just extremely attractive. That's memorable. Like you remember that. But 99.99% of the people you meet are not likely to have a change. Or look at the felon who did this. Or look at the person who lived off benefits and now they're a um, self-starting millionaire. The reason that that's a story is because it's unique. So if you play the percentages, it's also like, oh, I won the lottery, that's great. But not everyone wins the lottery. To win the lottery, it comes from a pool of people who lost, right? Like to get to that $100 million, the state takes in about $100 million. So $200 million has to be put into the pool. $100 million has to be lost. And then, well, almost $200 million has to be lost. The government takes about half. So fascinating to think about stuff from the perspective of uh, when, when you give up to do something you love and you keep at it, it can work, but not for everybody. Not for everybody. So Todd gave up. His job is security. And now it wasn't a great job. And that's what I think this has to do with. And my point, my second and most important point is that Magic the Gathering does not prepare you for a great job. There's no job that when they look at Magic the Gathering professional player, they're going to be impressed with. You might say card game designer, but how many of those jobs exist? That's such a small percentage. How many people are making physical card games or digital card games? It's only, I mean, there's Hearthstone and Magic and Pokemon, and that's pretty much it. Um, I know that people want to open new packs and new games, but they come and go. They come and go within a few years. I like this article because it tells you the raw reality of being a magic professional or a magic content creator when you're doing it at full time. If you do it as a hobby and you have other areas of income, it's a great hobby. You don't spend any money in a hobby. You break even. You have a good time. But if you're doing this as a full time income, you may have to engage in shady like activities like Pico Trade to get those points and or GoFundMes for things that you should already have. Again, not to say it too many times, but I've been watching the UK shows like Benefits and Proud, uh, Pay It or We Take It Away, and uh, Worst Tenants, Landlords. It's surprising to me that in the UK, how much people can get away with, that they cannot pay rent for two years, and then quote the council just because they have children, will have to put them in a new bed and breakfast place. And then they repeat the cycle because to them, they never, they've never paid a single day of rent because why would they when they know that 
worst case scenario, I get evicted. The landlord cannot come after me for money because I do not have money. And then I have, and then the emergency council, which is like, I guess their government system has to put them in a new place. And they're always complaining. They always have the, you know, best clothing. They have a huge TV. They always complain. Oh, you know, they want to put me in a different place. It's too far away. I need to send my schools to this really, I need to send my kids to this really nice school. But they haven't added anything to the system. Magic the Gathering is very similar, in my opinion, where people are living off essentially benefits. Um, and that's okay. That's okay for a little bit of time, but that's not okay, in my opinion, for a lifetime. And that shouldn't be something that is promoted. And that's what Wizards of Coast is doing with their 32 Magic Pros. They're promoting this, hey, this could be you. But look at the average age of those 32 people. John Finkel was not a young chicken. None of those people are Seth Manfield. They're not the target demographic. I mean, only Senhar. Senhar is, I think, below 25. Everyone else is really, maybe Oliver. Um, I don't know if Oliver made it, but he's. I think he's younger too. They're not representative of the demographic of something like Hearthstone. So the likelihood that you're going to become one of the John Finkels is just not existent because it took 25 years for John Finkel to become John Finkel. Right? LSV, PV. These people have been in magic for so long that unless you want to dedicate the next 20 years living like Todd did, pretty much paycheck to paycheck, writing articles and creating content, it is his dream, but sometimes, like, my dream is to own, well, I have two bucket list items. It's one, to own a magic store, and secondly, it is to go to Egypt. Uh, the magic store, I know I cannot own that for 20 years because it's going to bleed money all 20 years. But I had an okay year. I now own 100% of my regular business, and I can support, I can float the magic store for a year. But I fully expect me to say by the end of December, all right, that was really fun. I really enjoyed owning a magic store. Now I have all this like inventory that I get to keep, I guess, and open. I really enjoyed owning a magic store, but I got to grow up. You know, I, get, I, got, I did something cool, but it's time to grow up. And that's why I feel most... Um, needs to be said to people who want to make a living from Magic the Gathering is at some point in time you have to wake up. Uh, not having health insurance and being reliant on your donations for medical bills, that's not responsibility. That's not responsibility. Quitting your part-time professor job, that's not responsibility. You can still do that job even though if you don't like it. People do jobs all the time they don't like. Very few people actually have jobs they enjoy going every single day. Jobs are meant to be tough. In exchange for your time and your effort, you get paid cash. You get paid every two weeks. As we go more and more, and as there's more and more content creators who did, do this full time or the Magic Pros, I think that's what Wizard of the Coast wants. They want to encourage more people to try this lifestyle. Um, it, you have to come to the sad realization that this will never compare to a real job. Because a real job, let's say that Todd was working at the restaurant. One day, if Todd worked really hard, he worked, he put in his hours, he worked during Labor Day and weekends, and he didn't take off during the most popular times. Maybe he makes bigger tips, maybe he understands the restaurant industry more, maybe he becomes a manager. Maybe then he even owns, you know, runs a store. And then maybe he owns operates a new chain it's possible from for pizza for a pizza delivery guy who works really hard to be promoted up the chain of corporate but it is not possible for a magic gathering individual to do so because magic gathering is not a company it's a children's card game anyway that's it bye guys